some works that need to be done in your life. There's some things that need to manifest once you realize who you are. So once you realize who you are, you know the things that, that need to manifest and all the gifts that God has placed in you. So your destiny comes. Once you get to that destination, I want to tell you, don't stop there. Because that is just the beginning. Your destiny doesn't stop there. I have reached my destination to Cornerstone. I drove here today. I reached this destination. It's not that I'm going to sit here in my seat today and wait for the presence of the Lord. You see, I brought God with me on today. I don't have to wait for a man of God to come and preach it to me. I don't have to wait for somebody to sing me happy. I don't have to wait for the musicians to strike a chord for God to touch my I brought God with me on today. I want to know if you brought God with you. Because if you brought God with you, just like last Sunday and the Sunday before that, the Sunday before that, the Sunday before that, the Sunday before that, we have been experiencing God. And each time, every round go higher and higher. I'm telling y'all. I know they say them new, new preachers, they get the mic, they get all excited. But you know what? I pray. As Apostle Harris said in Sunday school, she prayed that God would just keep her in obedience. She said that. I pray that God would keep his spirit in me just like he did a new baby in Christ. Because once you keep that spirit, don't let it lie dormant in you. Because once it lie dormant in you, the enemy knows, oh, I can creep in. Because they have not been they have not been using it. They have not been participating. They have not been tapping in to what God has given them. I tell y'all, I don't know. Testimony service. I don't want to hear about your foot hurt. That is my testimony service. These are blessings of the Lord making me rich and Adam no sorrow. You see, we gotta have testimony school sometimes. Because once your testimony comes, it helps to praise the worship leader, help usher in the spirit of God. And once the Help us in the spirit of God. It helps the man of God bring forth the word of God so you can see the full package come together. As we talk, I tell you, I'm just so excited. There's no new car. There's no new job. There's no new money. There's no new house. I just tell you, I just thank God for who he is, what he is, how he has delivered me. I know everybody has a testimony. I you can start standing. I know everybody has something to give God glory for. I know that everybody has something to give God praise for. I told somebody in the church, I had a dream that the table was set, but it was back there. And I remember somebody was standing over the table. There was fine linen. There was food fit for a king on the table. There were dishes and china all over the table. But the person standing over this table didn't want the children And 
you put a fire in it for them. And I um, did a lot of things that I could do, and then I did some things I wasn't supposed to do because I didn't like what the administration was doing. And because they told me, don't write to them, don't talk to them outside of jail, don't help them, don't send them anything, don't send them any prayers, don't send them any Bibles, don't send them any prayer books. And, and I, I, I talked to some of the other people that were coming in there. And I talked to some of the people that I was speaking with. And they told me, they said, well, some people don't pray, they just come here and they read the Bible, and then they, they ask us how we feel, and they talk about the world, but they don't pray for us. And I realize that there's a system. There has to be a system. But I do know this, that, you know, Pastor told me yesterday, he said, you know, you can't break the rules under the banner of Cornerstone. And um, I, sometimes people write me back. Sometimes I see them outside of jail. Uh, but I, I think maybe I've written thousands of letters. Because some months I've written as many as 40 to 60. But I very seldom get people to say anything back to me to let me know that something has changed in their life, really. Not that they didn't have a moment of panic and accepted God and they thought they were going to be sent up the river, but something really happened. So I, uh, you know, had to, you know, uh, get this reprimand from the apostle. And uh, I won't be writing them anymore, or sending them anything, or bringing them anything. Because uh, Apostle has told me not to break the rules of the system. But this letter, I don't go in to see the men. I never go in to see them, because they won't let me, probably. But I don't go in to see the men. But this letter came from a man. I got it last week. And I usually don't keep these people's letters too long. But I'm going to keep this one because it's so, it was so inspirational to me. But in spite of it, I just thought you might like to hear part of it. His name is Joseph Solomon. What a name. Anyway, he goes like this. It's Joseph Solomon. I don't know how exactly you got my name, my info. But I did receive your letter. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Your letter has helped me in many ways. I say the prayer that you wrote for me, and I find it extremely inspirational. Like I said, I don't know how you ended up with my name and info, but I am a male, and maybe you got it from my fiance, but I am in jail, my fiance and my nephews, who I love very dearly, are all incarcerated. And I ask that you please pray for them and help them if you may with your, with a letter or mail. And again, I highly appreciate your talk taking the time out of your day to send me this letter and say a prayer for me. God bless your heart. I kindly ask that you continue to pray for me and my fiance and my family. And because I am getting to be eight old in the system. And this is not the first time I've been here. But I attend service here in Cook County Jail as often as possible. And also, I have joined the prayer circle in my chair. I must admit, I am not the most experienced person in speaking to the Lord. But I completely turn my life over to him. And I am at the mercy of him and the court. I am turning to be 34 years old on November 29th, and I'm tired of this life. And I'm looking to turn a new leaf, and I am turning my life over to God. Thank you, and bless your heart, Joseph Solomon. Amen. But I don't know how God is gonna allow, how God's gonna use me anymore to help these people. Uh, I, am, I am gonna examine myself, and um, I'm going down to talk to somebody in the administration and see if there's anything else I could do. I just met somebody last week who asked me if I did not have a house for the incarcerated members. I said, because why don't you give me one? 
So I may be getting some help. Amen. And if I get this help, it will be for them. Amen. And I just thank God for using me the way he's used me these six years. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I accept the correction from Apostle Person. And uh, I'm going to go forward with this, but it won't be in this manner any longer. But I think I'm going to keep the Apostle Solomon's letter. And uh, I just think that I was in the band of Cornerstone, you know, because from the beginning, very beginning, Apostle Francis and others have supported me in this. So I'm really glad to be a part of here, but uh, I have to learn that role, not to break the role. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, church. Amen. I think we had two others with testimonies out there. I want you to be able to give your encouraging word. Uh, your fire word. Yeah. Your breakthrough word. Apostle yeah. Harris. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. I do honor God today to Apostle uh, Francis and Cleveland Person to all the five fold ministries. I thank and praise God for being here this morning. Amen. We came by here Thursday for prayer. Uh, well, we know, you know, call saying, what about here, whatever, whatever. But in the midst of that, after that, we had got a phone call. We parked right outside of the door that uh, somebody wanted to bless my household. Yeah. And I said, well, okay. So, uh, Stan had sent me the information about getting on the prayer line. Mm. So this person was saying to me, say, no, you got to come now. So we went and, uh, the Lord blessed me with $1,200 in food. And all I had to do was my car to go get it. <laughs> Come on now. Amen. Go on, Amen. 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 They took us to Sam's Club and we shopped for like, like we was on supermarket. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. God is good. But it was a blessing from God. Yes. You know, and I was telling the truth because she was with me coming to prayer. And I said, we came for one thing, but look, God, God got us going somewhere. Yes. It's yes. blessing. Yes. Yes. But it still was all in divine order. Yes. Amen. Yes. And I thank and praise God yes. for that. I just yes. wanted to share that with you. Do what God tell you to do. Yes. The blessing will flow in. Yes. Amen. Yes. God bless you. Amen. 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 I beseech you, therefore, brethren, yeah. by the mercy, yeah. the mercy, yeah. the mercy yeah. of God, yeah. to present your body yeah. a living yeah. sacrifice, yeah. holy, holy, acceptable, woo, unto God, yeah. which is your yeah. reasonable, yeah. I said reasonable, yeah. service. Yeah. Yeah. And I decided that I today. It's reasonable to show up in the household of God. It's reasonable to live a holy life. It's reasonable to share the gospel. It's reasonable in spite of, because of what's going on, not to show it. It's reasonable to press on. It's reasonable to love the unlovable. It's reasonable to do what God
they for the testimonies. Praise and worship still can't come forth, people, only because we have to do something a little different. Okay. Sometimes as we study in Sunday school, once you realize something, your thinking begins to shift. Yeah. And because you think after testimony service, all right, praise and worship come, then the announcement, then the offering, then the minister. See, protocol is good. Yeah. And then there's a time when the spirit of the living God comes in and breaks up protocol. Yeah. And then he comes in and says, I understand your protocol. As I learned in the song, I trump your protocol. Yeah. And now it's time for you to let loose and open up and let my spirit come in so I can do what I need to do. You see, as you came in one way, expecting something one way, you came in thinking one way, but see, I want to change your vantage point. Instead of you looking over here and saying, okay, we're going to do this, this, and that, right now, I need to break up some fallow ground. I need to start breaking some things over some people. I need to start changing some things in your life. I still need to make some things new in your life. I need to start waking you up to my spirit. I need to give you a double dose of my anointing, and I want to give it to you, but you have to be receiving of it. You have to tap in to what he is going to do in this place today. You see, I don't want to be greedy. I don't want to be selfish. I would like to have it for myself. See, I already asked God for a double portion. See, my secret is, now I shouldn't tell my secret. <laughs> It wouldn't be a secret if I tell it. Right. But I tell you all, I'm telling you, if you tap in yeah. today, if you tap, I'm more fire flow. Maybe that's why I'm hot. But no, I'm just saying it's the spirit of the living God that lives inside of me because he's storing some things up on the inside of me. He's changing some things about my thinking. He's changing some things about my destiny because I realized who I was. I realized who he is. And I knew that my identity is starting to be my destiny. I am here at Cornerstone. That's my destination. But see, it doesn't end here. It doesn't end here. I'm telling y'all. I'm still sitting there like trying to think, figure it out. I guess I have to do it like this. Like, I do it at the clinic or the hospital. You see, Jesus is here. And if Jesus is here, would you sit? Would you think about what you're going to do next? You see, we can't stand in his presence because it's so awesome. I realize that. He is so magnificent. But see, if he was here in this very room, you want to receive something from him. You will come to him and say, Jesus, do you know that I am going through this situation? And he is standing there saying, just tap into me right now because what I have in store for you, you won't even begin to fathom. You won't be again to get to notice. And I tell you, you got to break up some things. You got to break up some things. I'm coming to you right now in the name of Jesus. With a prayer, okay? We're going to have to break some things right now. Because praise and worship won't be able to accomplish some things if you still got people thinking about what they forgot at home. If you got some people thinking what they did before they came into this place. Yourself cannot meet the presence of the Lord. You need his spirit to embody himself within you. You need his blessings to come down. You gotta act like you need something from God. You gotta think like you need something from God. And most of all, you gotta want something from God. I tell you all, I'm sorry. I shouldn't. Even, I don't mean to take no mic, but I just tell you right now in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we open ourselves unto you right now in the name of Jesus, God. We break up fellow ground right now in the name of Jesus. We come against every spirit that is unlike you right now in the name of Jesus, God. We ask your spirit to walk the aisles right now in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. Father God, let us forget those things which are behind. And Lord God, let us press in, oh God. Just like the woman with the issue of blood. Just as she saw the crowd, she saw the multitude, but she still pressed her way to God because there was something that she needed from him. There was something that she desired from him, and there was something that she wanted to get from him so badly that she decided to press her way through the crowd. She got on her knees because the crowd was so big, and she started to break through through the crowd, and then she just finally got to touch the hem of his garment. And when Jesus felt that, he said, who touched me? See, he wants to know which one of you all are going to touch him today so he can come in and do what he needs to do. His first
church you need to come in. His breakthrough wants to come in. His deliverance wants to come in. His spirit wants to come in. He wants to embody himself in you. He wants to break some things down in you. He wants to trouble the waters in you. He wants to change your thinking. He wants to change your walk. He wants to change your outlook on how you receive him. He wants you to change your outlook on how you perceive him. He wants to change your outlook on how you think of church. Church is a normal as usual. It isn't how you think of it as usual. God, we come against everything. Everything that comes to hinder your service right now. Father God, we come into your corporate anointing. We come into a corporate spirit right now, God. And Father God, we pull out and we pull it up by the roots, oh God. Everything that is embedded in stuff, oh God. That in our hearts and in our mind, God. That should not be here, oh God. And Father God, let your people know, oh God, that your presence is here. Your presence is moving. The apostolic anointing is moving. The breakthroughs are coming. The deliverance is here. God, the financial blessings, the increase, increase, increase is here. The increase in your spirit is here. All you have to do is just tap in. All you have to do is just come through, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh God. We speak it. We decree it. It is so. By faith, in Jesus' name I pray. Glory to God. Let's give him some praise on today. Yes, give yes. him some praise on today. We're going to move yes, in the Solid. 
for me because it could have been me. Yeah. Outdoor.
seed, this seed is, blessed. is blessed because we are planting it, because we are planting it. In, faith, in faith, in good soil, good soil. It, shall it shall return unto us 100 million, 1,000, 100, 60, and 30 fold. And offering time. And offering time. Praise the Lord. 